Okay, we're going to talk about diagnostic and therapeutic modalities within nuclear medicine. So nuclear medicine, um, there's traditional nuclear medicine and then there's, there's technologists that are trained in positron emission tomography. So there's two different areas within it. So we'll talk about nuclear medicine first and at the end we'll talk about um, PET scanning. So nuclear medicine is a medical specialty that uses radioactive material to both diagnose um, disease and to treat disease. So nuclear medicine um, imaging documents organ function and structure. So that's really important to know. So the physical principles. So radiopharmaceutical agents have two components. There's a radionuclei and a pharmaceutical. The pharmaceutical is selected based on its role in the target organ's physiological function. Um, so it's going to be targeted just for that organ. So radionuclei is tagged to a pharmaceutical. So here's some of them. So uh, physical principles, the radiopharmaceutical is administered to the patient, then the target organ is localized, um, and the radiation emitted from it can be detected by imaging instruments or gamma cameras. So tenesium-99 is the most commonly used radionuclei in nuclear medicine. So this gives you an idea how the technologists um, handle the isotopes. They have to wear gloves and behind a lead shield, and they have a dosimeter on their hand, typically. Well, they should, at least. Um, here's them injecting. They ha usually have lead syringes that they use when they inject. So preferred radiopharmaceutical characteristics, we want them to be easily produced and readily available. We want them to be low cost and the lowest permissible radiation dose to the patient. Primary photon energy for them is 100 to 400 keV, and the half-life greater than the injection prep time. So it would be bad if it's halfway um, gone in its radioactivity before you even inject it into the patient. So you want an effective half-life um, that is longer than the exam time. So you want your exam to end with still within your half-life. So suitable chemical forms for rapid localization. You want different uptake in the structure to be detected than the surrounding tissue. So you want it to be isolated for the particular organ. You want low toxicity in the chemical form administered to the patient. And you want it stable or near stability. You don't want it to be volatile. So nuclear medicine procedures may be diagnostic, which are tests of body function or therapeutic in which the radiation used to treat the disease. So radionuclei therapy is used in the treatment of both benign, so hyperthyroidism, or arthritis, and malignant disease such as thyroid cancer and hepatocellular carcinoma. So there's diagnostic radiopharmaceuticals. Um, they must be delivered the minimum possible radiation dose to the patient while still obtaining wire required diagnostic Im information where therapeutic radiopharmaceuticals must deliver the maximum radiation dose to the disease organ or tumor while minimizing the radiation dose to non-target tissues such as bone marrow to ensure minimal radiation to other parts of the patient's body. So depending on the study, the radiopharmaceutical can be ingest, injected intravenously or arterially. Um, it can be inhaled as a gas or aerosol or it can be ingested as a liquid or as a solid meal. So they'll actually put it in a sandwich for a patient. Gamma camera. So it localized measures and amplifies gamma rays emitted from the patient. It can be single head, dual head, which is the most common in facilities nowadays. And then there's triple head. So the triple head is usually used in spec as a special type of uh, camera. Uh, computers analyze and display data from these gamma cameras. So the components of a gamma camera is the collimator, the crystals, and the light pipes and the detector electronics. So the collimator is located on the detector face um, at the photon entrance into the camera. So they'll collimate so would they just receive the radiation from the patient in a certain area. The function is to separate gamma rays and keep scatter rays from entering. So just like us, they have scatter rays and they want to take out those scatter uh, rays from entering into the diagnostic data. It's composed of lead or other material with high atomic number. So the crystals and light pipes. So crystals are commonly composed of sodium iodine and um, thallium trace added to increase light production. Crystals compositions can stop most gamma rays from 
gamma rays emitted from nuclear medicine pharmaceuticals. So the thicker the crystals, they're better for imaging radio pharmaceuticals with higher energy, but you lose your resolution. So your thinner crystals have better resolution, but they can't handle the higher KEVs. So a light pipe is a disc of optically transparent material, and the function is to help direct photons from um, the crystal into the photomultiplier tubes. And um, they may be attached to attach crystals to photomultiplier tubes. I'll show you what that looks like. So detector electronics. So the photomultiplier tubes, the PMTs, detect and convert light from crystals to electronic signal and amplify the signal as much as 10 to the 7th. So that's a lot. PMT arrays are attached to the back of the crystals or light pipe and typical gamma camera detector heads contain 80 to 100 PMTs. So PMTs perform a series of processing steps on signal where they uh, the location, the X and Y of the original photon and its amplitude or energy, which is your Z. Um, pulse height analyzer eliminates the Z, uh, Z signals that are not within the desired preset energy range for a particular radionuclei, so it will wipe those out. So it's like a filter. Reduces scatter low energy unwanted photons, or what we also call noise, um, that degrade the image resolution. So process data are transmitted to the to the display system. So originally single detector heads or um, what we use, newer may have up to three heads and multi-crystal gamma cameras utilize an array of crystals that are coupled to um, position sensitive PMTs or photodiodes. So the effectiveness of detection increases with the increased crystal thickness and um, decreases with increased photon energy. So here you have um, your patient, and then you have your collimator, then your detector crystals, and your photomultiplier tubes. So better picture here, here's your patient, you have your collimator, you have your sodium iodine uh, crystals, you have your lead pipes, and your photomultiplier tubes. And then it comes out into your electronics. So scintillation camera or gamma cameras first developed by Hale um, Anger in 1958 and is still used uh, in modern technology. So here is a dual head. You can see top and bottom sandwich so the patient slides right in there. So the principal operation of a scintillation detector, so a radionuclei emits discrete energy photons which can either be totally absorbed, partially absorbed, or completely missed by the scintillation detector. So if gamma rays um, is absorbed, the scintillation detector converts the energy of the photon into a flash. So the flash of light is converted into electronic pulse, which is amplified um, in the system and is analyzed. Uh, depending on the energy of the initial absorbed and depending on how the operator sets up the scintillator detector, the photon is either counted or rejected. So when we talk about nuclear medicine, um, safety is really big. So special safety precautions are required because radionuclei continuously emit radiation after um, administration. So um, having the area prepped in nuclear medicine is really big. You have your own isolated ventilation. You have to wear protective um, lead or glass shielding for vials and syringes. And uh, gloves and lead syringes uh, shields required during handling administration to reduce exposure to the hands during administration to the patient. So um, dose to the hands is really big for nuclear medicine techs, so they will wear a ring um, that will detect radiation dose to their extremities. So spills must be properly contained and cleaned. Gloves required because agents can be absorbed through the skin causing unnecessary exposure. Technologists and nuclear uh, uh, pharmacists should wear a radiation detecting device on their hands. So um, you'll see the um, people come through. I'll show you on the next slide on the Geiger counters. So you have a hot lab and they're going to go through their lab and make sure that there's no drips or anything. So here they're going to measure um, their isotope. They're going to draw it up. Their hands go inside and you have, they have the lead here to protect their eyes and thyroid. So they'll draw up their um, isotope under that shield. 
and then they use a Geiger counter to go through the lab and you'll see them walking through the hospital halls scanning to make sure there's no drips or radioactive material on the ground giving unnecessary exposure to everyone. All right, so give me an idea of the lead syringe. So here it's just a little um, cap or it's, the syringe will slide inside of it so that um, there's a reduced exposure to the technologist and they draw up under here and we store them in lead syringes or syringe holders. You'll see them carrying little metal cases and that has their isotope if they're going up on the floors. And then they walk through with a Geiger counter every day to make sure that there's no um, spills in their lab. And it's called a hot lab because it's got radioactive isotopes. Okay, imaging methods. So there's static, whole body, dynamic, spec, and combo uh, spec and CT. So the reason, some of the things that we do, there's bone, um, central nervous system, endocrine, GIGU. Um, we do all kinds of different studies, and this will just kind of give you an idea of what we're doing. So clinical applications for the bone, we study the skeletal system. Uh, uh, urinary, we look at uh, anatomy and function of the kidneys. Brain scans, we evaluate for stroke, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. Um, GI, we look at gastric emptying, so that's a big one that they do and they have them eat a sandwich or something. Hepatobiliary studies, we look at the liver and the spleen. Cardiac, we look for cardio, uh, myocardial perfusions, we do stress and rest testing. And um, lung studies, there's ventilation and perfusion studies that we do. And um, here with nuclear medicine for thyroid uptake, we, um, sodium iodide. Um, we usually give it orally and we watch for the hyperthyroid and hypothyroidism. So the nuclear medicine technologist handles handling assessment and administration of nuclei, of radionuclei. The nuclear medicine physician interprets um, the studies and the radiation safety officer reviews imaging protocols and dosimetry reports and the health physicist calibrates and maintains the equipment. So we're going to uh, not really talk too much about this, but biological half-life cyclotron decay, half-life isotope scintillation, and tenesium-99 is in the book. So we'll talk about spec imaging. We have single photon emission computed tomography provides uh, improved image contrast and three-dimensional information. So spec requires additional quality control procedures, and it's a specialty scanner. So a series of gamma cameras, camera images is acquired as the camera rotates around the patient. So it's moving around the patient, taking images. Typically 60 to 120 images will be obtained in 20 to 30 minutes. Image reconstruction is usually performed using the technique known as filter back projection to produce a series of transaxial slices. So coronal and or sagittal uh, slices can be um, computed from the transaxial slices so they can reformat them like we do in CT. So here's a spec camera. So what happens is the patient goes up and slides in here and the camera goes around and then they go within the scanner also. So here is a spec of pelvic imaging. So you can see the CT scan and you can see the um, hot spot within the patient from the nuclear medicine. So positron emission tomography, also known as PET scanning. So how does this work? Here is a hybrid PET scanner. What was it? Yep. So here's your two gamma cameras. Patient goes up, slides in, and then gets scanned in the back. Um, here is the unit I have worked on. Um, it's kind of like an MRI. It's really long. So you have your gamma camera in the front here and in the back is your CT scanner. So the patient's lying within the uh, scanner for an hour to an hour and a half, depending. Okay, so here's a three head uh, scanner. So this is a thyroid. So it's just you can just put this right over the thyroid. So it's real small. Patients tolerate that really well. So three dimensional Tomographic imaging technique that demonstrates biochemical functions of the body organs and tissues. So it detects abnormal function, detects disease in early stages, and measures response to treatment for cancer. So we use positron emission tomography generally for cancer, but we can use it for Parkinson's, MS. Um, there's a lot of other things that we'll use it for. Also, um, any kind of degenerative joint disease. 
So pet principles. Pet is a multidisciplinary technique for four processes. Um, you have the scanner to perform the clinical examination, the cyclotron to produce the positron emitter, and um, we can manufacture the uh, isotope used. The standard chemistry system to create the chemical precursor for uh, which will be further processed by um, the dedicated synthesis unit and the tracer lab equipment to produce the tracer. So all of that is required in order to do um, PET imaging. So PET scanning is very limited due to the high cost of setting up the PET equipment. So you'll see a lot of um, PET trucks. So um, you'll see a PET truck come into your hospital once or twice a week so that they can scan all the patients because setting up, sending up a PET scanner is very expensive. All right, so clinical use of PET, um, oncology imaging, really big for any oncology. We do it for neurologic and uh, cardiology also. So here's the basics. So um, you have isotopes that are given off and intercepted by the receptor. And then you have your CT scan also. So positron emission uh, process. So tracers administered to the patient, radiation emitted from the tissues. Pos uh, positron emitted from the nucleus combines with an electron, undergoes annihilation. Sound familiar? Uh, produces two 511 keV photons emitted at 180 degrees from each other. So that is the basic principles. So common positron and emitting um, elements. So we do oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and fluorine. And if we look at um, FDG, what we just call FDGE, FDG, it's looking at the glucose metabolism. And that's what we use for oncology. So and we can manufacture this, which is great. So um, we can inject it into patients and see any kind of increased metabolic rate. There's um, O water, so it's for blood flow and perfusion, and ammonia also uh, blood flow and perfusion, and methylene, which is for amino acid uh, metabolism. So a cyclotron um, accelerates subatomic particles, directs particles to non-radioactive target producing a radionuclei. Tracers have a very short half-life, so 120 seconds to 110 minutes. So these are very, very high dose in a short period of time. Their half-life is really, really fast. So to do these studies, um, if you inject a patient, you have to be ready to scan that patient um, quickly. So um, the timing is important. All right, so Clinical applications, oncology, we assess and stage possible tumors. So the FDG is used to measure glucose metabolism. Tumors demonstrate increased sugar uptake. So image demonstrates metabolic, uh, metabolic, metastatic disease, including brain and bladder. So you can see here all the hot spots. We call these hot spots. All right, so cardiology, we evaluate for coronary, coronary artery disease. So we use pneumonia to evaluate heart perfusion, so sufficient blood flow to the heart tissue. And we use FDG to evaluate uh, glucose metabolism to measure whether normal function has returned uh, following treatment. So you can see here there's a, a filling defect, and then after treatment it is um, flowing again, which is good. So neurology, epilepsy, we use um, uh, FDG is given to localized seizure sites. So the arrow indicates the arrow indicates increased glucose uptake um, for the area of focus of the seizures. So neurology, we um, brain mapping. We localize areas of the brain function, including language, memory, and vision movement. We determine whether the lesion will affect key areas of the brain. The blue arrow, arrow indicates language region of the brain. The red arrow demonstrates the AVM. So um, we can actually do some mapping with it. So CNS tumor imaging. So uh, methylene assesses amino uh, acid metabolism tumor, where FDG uh, grades the tumor to determine activity. Um, or glucose metabolism. So um, evaluation for dementia. So given to measure glucose in the brain. So A is normal and B is mild and C is severe dementia. So you, we can look at dementia within the brain. So a lot of cool things that we can do. So PET-CT um, Acquires functional pet and automatic, 
anatomic CT images simultaneously. Two databases can be displayed as a single merged image. So we put one image on top of the other so we can localize uh, tumors. So this is a hybrid scanner. Um, where they scan the patient uh, with the gamma cameras and then they go through the CT and the software automatically um, merges the two so you can see exactly where the tumors are. So this gives you an idea. Here's the CT scan. Here's the nuclear medicine scan. Or here's the nuclear medicine scan and it, it puts the two together so that you can see exactly where that tumor is. So here's the CT. Here's the... Um, the uh, nuclear medicine scan and the two superimposed. So fusion study, whole body, so metastatic spread of breast cancer. So this is just, um, it looks like just the nuclear medicine scan, but we can fuse it. So we can take, here's the CT scan, here's the nuclear medicine scan, and we can fuse the two and we can see the hot spots within the liver. So sometimes it's hard to tell exactly where they're at, so we can scroll through the CT and see the extent of the disease within the liver. All right, so that's it. That's your nuclear medicine lecture.